Hi, my name is Harlan. Welcome to the H. Matricon Mechanical Engineering Channel. Our topic for today is entitled Introduction to Fire Sprinkler Systems. A sprinkler system uses water distributed through an arrangement of valves, piping, and nozzles. An automatic fire sprinkler is a device that su suppresses fire. It operates automatically when its heat activated element is heated to its thermal rating, thus allowing water to discharge over a specified area. The function of the fire sprinkler system is to, number one, allow water to automatically discharge over a specific area, and second, to activate an alarm. There are five types of fire sprinkler systems. The first one is the wet pipe sprinkler system. The second one is a dry pipe sprinkler system. And the third one is the pre-action fire sprinkler system. The fourth one is the huge fire suppression system. And the fifth one is anti-freeze fire uh, sprinkler system. For the wet pipe sprinkler system, it is composed of closed heads, which is opened by heat from the fire. And the piping system contains the water under pressure. And the alarm check valve activates an alarm when water flows. The alarm check valve prevents the reverse flow of water. Whereas, in a dry pipe sprinkler system, we have closed sprinkler heads opened by heat from fire. And the piping system contains air or nitrogen under pressure. And uh, air or nitrogen holds the dry pipe valve in a closed position. Dry pipe valve prevents water from entering the pipe. And dry pipe sprinkler system provides protection in areas where freezing is possible. Reaction sprinkler systems. Closed sprinkler heads are opened by heat from the fire. And the pipe system contains air. Electrically operated valve called the pre-action valves prevents water from entering the pipe. And operation of the pre-action valve is controlled by flame, heat, or smoke detection. And lastly, pre-action sprinkler system provides protection where freezing is possible. Deluge fire suppression system. It is the only system here having open sprinkler heads. The piping is not filled with pressurized air and the piping is connected to the water supply through a deluge valve. It's called deluge fire suppression system. Deluge coming from the meaning to inundate or to flood. Operation of the deluge valve is controlled by heat or smoke detection. Water discharges to all of the sprinkler heads once the system is being activated and it provides high velocity suppression to prevent fire spread in high hazard areas. The last one is the anti-freeze sprinkler system. We have closed sprinkler heads opened by heat from a fire and piping system contains anti-freeze solution like a glycol solution and the alarm check valve activates an alarm when water flows. An alarm check valve prevents reverse flow uh, of water. General characteristics of sprinklers. Number one, thermal sensitivity. And we have two classifications. The fast response, which have a RTI of 50 uh, meters second to the one half or less. Okay. Uh, response time index, that is the meaning of RTI and the standard response which has an RTI of greater or equal to 80 meters second to the one half. And 
The next characteristic is the temperature rating. Orifice size will be the third one. And the fourth will be installation orientation. Like we have the upright sprinkler, we have the pendant sprinkler, and we have the flush sprinkler, depending on the orientation. And water distribution characteristics and special service conditions like those uh, uh, corrosion resistant sprinklers. Fire sprinkler system components, branch lines, the pipes supplying sprinklers directly or through sprigs, drops, return bends, or arm overs. Sprigs is a vertical pipe, short vertical pipe, uh, which rises onto leading to the upright sprinkler. And uh, arm overs are extensions to the end of the branch line, leading to sprinklers which are located either above the ceiling or below the ceiling. Cross mains are the pipes supplying the branch lines and the feed mains are the pipes supplying the cross mains. The system riser are the above ground vertical or horizontal pipe between the water supply and the mains that contains a control valve and a water flow alarm device. Rated pressure of fire splinter components. For above ground components, it is 175 pounds per square inch gauge. Underground components, 150 pounds per square inch. The pipeline of a fire sprinkler system is sized using two methods. The first one is based on the minimum available water pressure and the number of sprinkler heads connected to the pipeline as detailed in NFPA 13, standard for the installation of sprinkler systems. And NFPA means National Fire Protection Association. The second one is the use of hydraulic calculations. Hydraulic calculations based on a remote location, the farthest from the water supply source, Type of also based on the type of building occupancy, the flow of water at that remote location, and the flow of water at each design point, and the available water pressure. Owner's certificate. Before the design is going to be started, the owner's certificate is always needed. The owner of the building where the fire sprinkler system will be installed shall provide the sprinkler system installer with the following information prior to the layout and detailing of the sprinkler system. Number one, intended use of the building, the materials within, and the maximum height of any storage. Second, the preliminary plan of the building along with the design concepts needed for the details and layout of sprinklers. Third, any special knowledge of water supply, including environmental conditions. Is it exposed to corrosion in that area? Or are there any er, er, special, uh, special conditions that, uh, that are happening in the place? Classification of occupancies. This is very important that uh, you focus, the designer should focus on the building cl classifications because we should know what we are up against. We have to design a sprinkler system that is effective enough so that uh, the fire will not be able to overpower your sprinkler system. So building occupancy types are classified according to the potential for fire. As follows, we have Actually, we have three main ones. The light hazard, the ordinary hazard, and the extra hazard. So for the light hazard, the quantity and combustibility of the contents are low, and fires of relatively low rates of heat release are expected. Examples, offices, schools, and public buildings. Ordinary hazard, we have two groups. The first group and the second group. So for the ordinary hazard group one, 
low combustibility, moderate quantity of combustibles, and stockpiles of combustibles do not exceed 8 feet in height, and the fires of moderate rates of heat release are expected, so moderate rates of heat release. Ordinary hazard group 2, we have moderate to high combustibility. See the difference? Uh, in group 1, we have moderate combustibility. Now this is moderate to high. Moderate to high quantity of combustibles and the stockpiles of moderate rates of heat release do not exceed 12 feet and the stockpiles of the contents with high rates of heat release do not exceed 8 feet. Extra hazard. There are also two groups. Group 1 and Group 2. Extra hazard Group 1. Quantity and combustibility of contents are very high. Dust, lint, or other materials are present, introducing the probability of rapidly developing fires with high rates of heat release. Little or no combustible or flammable liquids. Group 2. Moderate of substantial amounts of flammable or combustible liquids and shielding of combustibles is extensive. For the commodities, we have four classifications. Class 1 commodity refers to a non-combustible product that meets one of the following criteria. Number 1, placed on pallets. Second, placed in single layer corrugated cartons with or without cardboard separators with or without pallets shrink wrap or paper wrap as a unit load with or without pallets class 2 commodity non-combustible product that is in slatted wood crates solid wood boxes multiple layer corrugated cartons and any combustible packaging material with or without pallets. Class 3 commodity, product that is fashioned from wood, paper, natural fibers, or group C plastics, elastomers, or rubber with or without cartons, boxes, or crates with or without pallets. Permitted to contain group A or group B plastics less than 5% by weight or by volume as uh, in detail in section 5.6.4 of NFPA 13 for classification of plastics. Now, uh, for an example of class A plastics, we have uh, polyethylene, we have acrylic, and we have a PVC that is uh, uh, flexible. And uh, for group B, we have uh, the uh, silicon rubber and for group C we have the uh, polyvinyl fluoride and uh, we have phenolic uh, as an example. Class 4 commodity product with or without pallets that meets the following criteria. Constructed partially or totally of group B plastics consists of free-flowing group A plastics and contains within itself or in its packaging group A plastics amounting to 5% to 15% by weight to 25, 5 to 25% by volume. So in the next video tutorial we will give an example of how to lay out the sprinkler system and I will give a specific example and then I, we will discuss on how to lay out the sprinkler system. And in, also in a succeeding video, I will show you how to do the hydraulic calculations so that you can size the pipes and the components of the sprinkler systems. Thank you for watching and uh, welcome again to H. Machacon mechanical engineering channel.